Mm -hmm. But I was like, we don't have a tray here. So I decided to bring it here. Okay. You want to fall? <laughs> I'm so confused that I... We'll be talking about a very few things here and there. Today will be a very short video. Thank you so much for joining. Today I'm not going to say it's a lot because it's a few. Just updates and uh, they are discussing or rather reacting to a few videos here and there. Few but very interesting. So, are you ready for this video? Because I am. Let's start. So welcome back and welcome if this is your first time joining us. Thank you so much. I really appreciate your presence. If this is your first time watching or you've been watching but you've not subscribed, kindly consider subscribing, like the video, turn the notification bell on of course so that you can be notified every time I upload a video and most importantly share your thoughts in the comment section. Let me know what you think, what you like, what you don't like, your thoughts, what's happening that you think I'm not aware of because guys it's so hard catching up with each and everything that is going on especially this week <laughs> it's been crazy crazy but of course i try my best to bring you up to speed on what is happening so thank you so much for joining i really appreciate you honestly so much and for my people for my for my people thank you so much i love you like so much I really appreciate you. I'm so humbled by your support because you always come back to watch the videos. You share your thoughts in the comment section. You don't forget to smash the like button. That is a lot, guys. You don't even understand. I don't even have to repeat because I think I've always been sharing this. It's the most powerful way of communicating and uh, contributing to the growth of the channel. So thank you so much for always turning up, for always coming through for your girl. I really appreciate. I really appreciate it. And I don't take that for granted. So, let's start off. Today we'll be discussing a few things. Maybe we can start uh, with uh, Di Mwango. <laughs> She's in Mexico. She's in Mexico. But uh, it's going south. <laughs> I was like, we are almost taking a break from what has been happening. Because, um, <laughs> of course, as you may be aware, Senso came out here and decided <laughs> to keep us busy. So, this is what is happening in Mexico. Di Mwango was going on our own <laughs> shenanigans as always. So he met this person. Apparently, he's a driver that had just decided to show around Di Mwango. While he was still showing around Di Mwango, hmm, the phone was snatched away. I'm so sorry, forgive me, but the first thing that came to my mind was Rocio <laughs> because I just instantly I remember Rocio in South Africa coming out here to tell people that I'm so happy that finally I'm in a country that um, I can uh, I can be surrounded by white by white people you cannot uh, no one can steal from you but of course I was so surprised that um, it happens in Mexico many other places that we've been traveling in Africa so far I feel like ice on me, you know, in many places, but so far we're in Namibia and now here I, I'm just one, one in the group, you know, I don't feel like, like the, the ice on me or like maybe being targeted or things like this. I feel more normal. Like I could, I could just be just a, another citizen. Yeah. So that yeah. also, you know, helps me to relax in terms of security and things like that, so. So technically, Rosio is saying she's seeing more white people. That makes her more comfortable. Yes, yes, yes. Like Stop it. Get some help. But of course I knew that it happens everywhere. We've always said this, irregardless where you come from, it happens. So this driver's phone was stolen, which resulted to a lot of things and a lot of people, not even a lot of people, our own <laughs> Dimwango subscribers themselves had a lot to tell Di Mwango. Did she listen to them? We'll get to know. So, let's watch the video, then we come back. So guys, he has just been stolen the phone just now. But guys, just like that he has been stolen. Maybe, maybe you could report so that maybe they could tell. It's 
tried anyways. I'm so sorry for doing it. crowded areas you have to at least you know put the bag at the front sometimes they can even cut it it's a tricky situation you know you really never know so. someone just uh, stole from uh, that driver he, he seems like a nice guy so of course it was just an accident it happened and uh, they went around asking for a policeman for help as you just saw but now what caught my attention was the fact that um Dimwango kept mentioning the country that she comes from. And I was like, wow, <laughs> you're so fast to drag your own country in negative things. But when you're in a place that um, it's filled with uh, positive things, you hardly, you never, you never mention Kenya. In fact, you'll remind your people that it's opposite in Kenya. So it was so interesting because uh, she mentioned so many things. The first thing that uh, she said after this, the phone was stolen is that um, it's just like where I come from. Which, which is so true, it's just like any other country. The second thing that he mentioned about uh, Kenya was that um, when he was following up uh, with the Mexican police officer, this is what she said. I don't believe, I know nothing will happen with the, this follow-up. The police officers will not come up with a solution, just like my country, <laughs> where I come from, which is true. But of course, if you come from Kenya, if you decide that you want the police officers to be engaged, they win. Especially if your phone can be tracked, they win. But of course, not that easily. But I don't, I'm not rubbishing what she said. It's so true. But my concern was the fact that uh, when she comes across any negative thing about a country, she will not, she will not forget and it will be the first thing that she mentions. Just like my country, which as I said, it could be true, but is it necessary? Do you have to come out here always <laughs> and defend where you come from? Of course, as a Lamborghini Mwango, it's necessary because <laughs> she's a Jamaican as we speak, of course not. Not a legal Jamaican, which is, which is a right, you know. But of course it was interesting. But I was not surprised. So let's go back to the point. This is what happened. Of course, as I just mentioned, and I just shared. Let me share if I didn't. Uh, I think there's nothing the police can do about it so far because he has been trying to communicate, I don't know, but still no positive results. So guys, when you come to Mexico, if you're in big markets, please be careful. When somebody hits you, like when you feel some, you know, some motion, just know it's not okay, you know? So basically, that's how his phone got stolen. And, uh, you know, it's, it's quite obvious when you're in a very crowded uh, street, then you feel some commotion, like some pushing, just get to know there's something happening. It's either you are being stolen or somebody else is being stolen, you know, because I was like, hey, this push is just so massive. So I think that's when he got stolen. We had to report to the police, to the police that were around. But, you know, just like my country, there's nothing much they can do about it. Once your phone is stolen, that is it. You know, they tried to, we tried to call. I tried to call personally his number, but it was... You know, it was off. It was. It had already been switched off. So that's to show the thief was already using the phone already, you know, switched off, you know, SIM card removed. You know how it goes, guys. So when you come to Mexico, just be careful when you go to crowded places. Just be careful, more so with the phones and all that, because you never know. So um, right now, we just, you know, the police is just escorting us to the call center. I mean, man, like... This is just something else. But the thing is, I know the police can, you know, can never help that much when it comes to such cases. So it's just giving us an escort to the, to the um, call center so that he can get to report that his phone has been stolen so that he can get to block whatever information he needs to block. So that's how it has been. And uh, 
I couldn't keep on filming because you know the energy and everything is spoiled but that's how it is guys I'll keep you updated but that's how that's what happened here and uh, it wasn't a good ending because he was such a nice driver to me you know he just volunteered to take me along then yeah all this happened so um yeah so as you heard that person is a driver is a is a local driver that i just decided to show around bimwango the person just volunteered a nice guy as you can just see he seems like um, a nice guy <laughs> but at the same time i was like is this the same person that when they are always out out there especially dimango when she's out there she will always look for a kino you know what we mean by kino someone that you can use to drive you around <laughs> to show you places but of course i hope she pays these people because of course if she does it's not using so that aside after the phone was stolen a lot of people had a lot to say about that incident of course everyone was so sorry <laughs> Of course, everyone was so sorry of what happened. I'm also not happy about what happened. So, a lot of people were urging in the comment section. If you just go to the comment section, a lot of people, her supporters are urging her to buy a phone. Replace it. Replace for this guy. Because, of course, as you see, he was really following up with the... He was really following up with the police officers. But, um, unfortunately... But of course, I don't know. I don't come from Mexico. But uh, if uh, it can be traced, well and good. But if it cannot, this is a person who was uh, volunteering, you know, just a nice person. He decided to show you around. Some people in the comment section were alleging that um, maybe he just wanted something small because uh, apparently he has been spotted in a specific hotel just outside relaxing. You know, you can never know. You can never know what someone is going through. Maybe. It was like, let me show this person around. I might get something from it. So that is what I wanted to share. A lot of people are urging Dimwango to replace the phone, buy a phone for this person, replace it for this person. Of course, this is what I have to say. She's not. It is. She's not obliged. It's not her obligation to buy the phone. But do you think it will be nice? Of course, I support that because, uh, especially. If he's not in a position to, not even especially if he's, not even that uh, he's not in a position to, just buy the damn phone. Because if, maybe if this person didn't accompany you, maybe he would have had the phone. He would have not misplaced the phone. So, what do you think, guys? What do you think? But of course, a lot of people were skeptical. They were like, huh, she will not buy the phone i don't know maybe she will maybe she will not but um i hope she does honestly because if you're in a position if she's in a position to buy why not because uh, this is a person who was just being nice in the process in that position he lost the phone what do you think let me know in the comment section if you think she should buy the phone but of course i i think I know. <laughs> I think uh, she's not obliged to. It's not a must for her to buy, but um, it would be a nice gesture. Let me know in the comment section if you think she should buy the phone. Let me know. So something else that I noticed in the comment section, a lot of people were mentioning that um, Dim Wongo should be very careful in Mexico. Why? <laughs> this is an allegation. If you come from Mexico, please don't come for me. <laughs> I'm just reacting to what I see out there. So, a lot of people are claiming that uh, Mexicans don't like black people. They don't. What do you think? What do you think? Is it that serious? Like, <laughs> like as a black person, you have to be very cautious. Of course, I don't uh, disagree. I just want to learn because uh, that is new for me. But is Rocio from Mexico? Because of course a lot of people have been uh, discussing that. That um, Argentina, in Argentina, of course, we have the history of what happened. During the colonial era, we know what happened. So, I didn't expect, of course I know it happens. Even where we come from, even the US, it still happens. But I, I didn't imagine that it's still that serious. If you're very aware <laughs> of uh, that issue, in Mexico, Southern America, let us know, because uh, that was a very, 
mentioned thing in the comment section I, I was just lacking in the comment section and I, of course i did notice a lot of people were discussing about that and I, of course i was like i have to bring it out here so that uh we can discuss inform us especially if you're aware <laughs> you don't have to come from mexico you might be you might have the information of course so that you can be aware and we find ourselves in mexico we need to know the tingo let us know honestly on a serious note of course we really appreciate if you can enlighten us in the comment section so of course i know we can uh, do some research but uh, it cannot be compared with someone with a first-hand experience maybe you've heard from someone from mexico you've been to mexico you come from mexico you know you understand what i mean so that was uh, something interesting some people were almost claiming that uh, they are <laughs> they want to replace the blacks as uh, the mi minority in the u.s that's a rumor that is a very big allegation i'm just sharing out here because it captured my attention and i was like it will be nice if we get it from someone with first-hand experience so that is it about dimwango let's move to someone else before we move to the next topic i was just watching uh, david jr in the <laughs> in Casta because they've been posting out here with the uh, <laughs> serious clickbaits you don't even know what is true what is not true but of course something that we know is that uh, david jr and Casta are uh, flowing with the vibes <laughs> they're flowing with the vibes because of course you know that is a trademark for david jr just flowing with the vibe which is a nice slogan you know but uh, that is what they are doing they are flowing with the vibes <laughs> in the coastal region of kenya but uh, something that i've noticed don't wake up david jr in the morning because uh, this reminded me of uh, two, one month one or two months ago let's watch wow. Wow. what so, do you think so you decided to do this yeah i wanted to make you breakfast in bed mm -hmm. but i was like we don't have a tray here so i decided to bring it here okay. you want to fall <laughs> I've been sleeping, so oh, thank you so much. Thank you for your kindness. You're welcome. Wow, I'm so speechless, guys. Maybe when you know, I I just uh, waking up right now, so I don't feel like even it's real, you know. Yeah. Like, I'm so confused, but uh, thank you so much. You're welcome. For your kindness. Enjoy. Oh, wow. Is that being sleepy or it's enjoyment? Because uh, there is no difference between that that video that I just shared with the, this video. But uh, yeah, there you go. Okay. You should go there. You, he's very quiet for. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not very quiet. Yeah, it's just not. Like it's, <laughs> just uh... now, just now. <laughs> yeah. For a moment, I thought maybe I, I shocked him. <laughs> Okay. Uh, that is not like Nairobi, so it's very chill. So here it's safe. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It is. Yeah. It is. No, but, great stuff, man. Uh, it's good to see, you know, because uh, even that friend of mine that was uh, passing by yeah. was like, man, the entire village here. In Tanzania, because of course you remember that video from Tanzania was so scary. We were like, what is going on? <laughs> what is going on? And of course it kept me thinking, is it the same thing? Maybe it was just sleepy and we were <laughs> making a big deal out of it, but of course it's not the same thing. In Tanzania it was the entire day. It was like almost losing it. So it was just interesting to see that because um, that, that kind of behavior is so common with uh, David Jr. And I remember there was a time uh, someone shared in the comment section that he likes enjoyment. <laughs> if you know you so maybe that is the reason what do you think do you think it's being sleepy or it's enjoyment <laughs> which is a different uh, which is a very different kind of enjoyment if you don't know forget about it so that is it about uh, david jr in casta of course that was just on a lighter note because uh, i like them honestly i do david jr in casta but of course i don't agree with some of the things about david jr the content is something that you can watch and like when uh, David Junior is alone especially when he's in the village because all will be showing all uh, because all he'll be sharing is the compound the cars 
it's God, we are flowing with the vibes, this and that. It was interesting. <laughs> it was something you can watch when they are together. But uh, I think at the moment they are back in Kenya because I think they just left the coastal parts of Kenya. So so that is it about that. But of course a lot of people are still questioning, are they, are they really dating or it's just content? You know what I mean? You know why a lot of people are questioning? What do you think? Do you think it's a real relationship or a, you have to do what you have to do for money? What do you think? But uh, personally, I think uh, it's a genuine relationship, honestly. <laughs> what do you think? Is it a genuine relationship? Maybe. Personally, I do believe. I At least after what happened, at least after this trip to the coastal parts, of Kenya because uh, you can see that uh, David Jr. is shining, you know, is glowing. So, do you agree with the people questioning their relationship that um, it's not it, like uh, they're just acting for content? What do you think? Let me know in the comment section. So, let's move to the last part, then we call it a day because as I said, this would be the shortest video. So, let's talk about Alex because in the three-hour video, the three-hour video, I don't know if you remember, but... Um, we were discussing one by one because I was not in a position to share first hand <laughs> instantly as it happens. But of course, I'm so grateful that you've always watched the videos, even if I shared days later. Thank you so much. I really appreciate So we are moving to the last part of the three hour video. Three hours. Can you imagine? And it was three hours mentioning different kind of people. I'm talking about uh, Ayamarwa's life that he did that resulted to this chaos in the internet for the past one week. He came out here dragging people in a three-hour video, dragging each and every one that he has ever met. And uh, we were mentioning, I was coming out here and we would uh, react. We would react to one person, one person. Today we are in the last person, finally. That is um, Alex. Alex was a watchman. At some point, it could be a houseboy. At some point, it's just a villager that... Uh, Marwa picked, as always, to be a servant in that villa. But um, due to so many things, you just know Senso. Senso is so complicated. Anything can result to anything. So they fell apart. And of course, Alex left. <laughs> but before he left, Marwa had started a foundation for a, a house. Because they had promised him to construct a house for him. So one thing that uh, Senso mentioned regarding to this house in the three-hour life, he mentioned that... Uh, at least he built three houses. Really? Of course that is not the case. We saw it was just a house, a three, three, <laughs> three rooms. And of course it was not a permanent home. It was a temporary one. Of course, I'm not uh, playing down what Senso did. It's amazing. At least it's, it's a shelter, you know. That was Alex. So for Alex, it's very simple, guys. Alex left my home saying he was not paid. In the villages of Africa here, you can ask anybody else, in the village, somebody who helps you in the compound, they pay, they get paid like $50. $50, which could be $5,000 to $6,000, up to $10,000. Depending on how many years they have worked for you and how trustworthy they are, they can get up to $50,000. That is here in the village. And that is the price here in the village. It's not Marwa's price. It's not my neighbor's price. It is everybody's price. Because on a normal day, even if somebody works on hard labor, construction, they get paid $3. What? Three dollars a day. So if they work five days a week, how many dollars are that? Fifteen dollars a week. Times four per month, that's sixty dollars. And that is nearly the normal price people get paid here. Whether you are rich, poor, that is what here in the village people get paid, especially where I come from. Because there are no jobs and there are very many people who are willing to offer their services. And it's not about even having jobs or no jobs. That is the normal price. So when such people come out there and say, oh, I was only being paid $50 at Ayamaro to work these days. You guys are like, oh, how could Maro just pay this guy $50 a month? Is that crazy? That's not my price. That is the market price. That is the market price. It's not me who decides. And something funny you have to know, if you put higher, higher wages, some of your workers actually even don't want to work. They would want to be paid and disappear and do shagala bagala stuff. So that's Stop the it. Get the some team. help. You can ask anybody. And actually, that is someone who is paying you good. Some people even get paid 3,000 Kenyan shillings a month. 
We have 12 minutes to go and we'll end this live stream. So if you want to support me in any way, please, this is the moment. You want to like the video, you want to donate anything. I've been talking for three hours straight. I want to show you where I met him, this guy living. So I told him, I will transform him. I will do something for you. People contributed small monies, guys, like buy him a bed, buy him a door. But majority of the money was from my pocket. Not even majority, like 90% or 99%. Because people were contributing a door. And actually, after he left, even some people who were sending money, they said, Maro, you can take that money and help another person. Don't even help that guy anymore. Stop it. Get some help. But uh, he will be lying for him to come out here and say that uh, he constructed by himself. Because that was not the case. A lot of people were sending donations and they would use the donations to construct. We didn't see a point where he had where he had to withdraw from his account and construct the home. So that is the first part. The second part he mentioned was the salary. Because of course if you remember he didn't pay this person three months salary. Three months, no, two months salary. That is a lot. Can you imagine you work for two months and you're not paid? So this is what Senso said. He said that uh, he took the two months salary to construct the house. <laughs> to construct the house that uh, he promised this person that he was going to volunteer and construct a home for him. A house for him. Which is so wrong, honestly, because uh, this is the salary. This is the money that this person is using to buy food. To buy food for his family. Why would you use it? Of course, that was so wrong, honestly. What do you think? <laughs> that is the excuse that he came out here to share. I used the two month salary to construct the house, which was not the agreement. But uh, I understood why he had to mention that. Of course, he had to come out here and sanitize his name because it's public. People know that he didn't pay the two months salary. So that is what he had to say about the salary. So the last part he mentioned was that uh, no, and on that part of the salary he said that uh, because of course a lot of people were criticizing the amount that he was paying why not Alex? Not even the amount, considering the work considering the work that Alex was was doing in that villa. I think he was paying around uh, 30 or 50 dollars a month. Yes a month after everything that this person was doing, of course we saw it, it was a lot of work, a lot of work. So, of course he came out here to justify, to justify that uh, that is what people are, being, people are being paid. That is enough for a Kenyan, that is, what, that is the market price, that is the amount that people are being paid per month, which have come out here to number without times, to disagree with that, because that is not the case nowadays. I think uh, four, five, five or six, four or five years ago, that is what was happening. But at the moment, you cannot pay someone less than $100 a month for someone in the village do, doing the kind of work that Alex, that Alex was doing. Of course it's so wrong, but I don't understand why he always comes out here to justify the amount that he pays these people. You will not fail. He will always mention that because that is the amount that he pays the people working in that villa, which is so sad because, as I always say, you can never judge the person who is coming out there to put themselves in that position to be paid 30 to $50 a month because it's the village, you can hardly find work. And that is something that he mentioned. Of course, he had to mention because um, it's, it just shows that uh, that is taking advantage of someone because you know that uh, they cannot easily find work. You know they cannot easily find work. That is why you're out here paying them that amount of money. That is so wrong, honestly. It's not right. But uh, what can we say? Because uh, as I said, it's the village. It's hard. Of course, you can, of course you can always get the casual jobs. You go, you plow land for someone, you're, you're paid. I think it's around $5. $10 or $7 a day. So, of course, people would prefer such kind of work that uh, you're guaranteed every month you're paid. But, of course, it comes with a price. People like Senso knows that uh, you will hardly find such kind of work and they'll pay you what they please, what they want to pay you. But you cannot do anything because, um, as I said, <laughs> for the 10th time, as I said, it's so hard to find work in the village. It's not harder. It's not impossible, but it's sad. Of course, demand and, sub demand and supply 
you know, the demand for work is high, but the people who are offering these jobs, few. It's sad. Sad state of affairs, but uh, it is what it is. Life is unfair. So, so the final thing that uh, he mentioned, told about um, Alex was that um, there were some amounts that some people had contributed, of course through Marwa, but he didn't give it to Alex after they parted ways. This is what he said. So this is what he said after they fell apart. Quote unquote, the people who had contributed told me to use this money <laughs> to do whatever I want to do with it, to put it in other projects. Tell me that is not a lie. Tell me that is not a lie. Can you imagine that you contributed to Alex after Marwa and Alex fell apart? Do you want to tell me that people went to Marwa and told him, because you've fallen apart, don't use this money for construction. Don't give it to Alex. For him, of course, to put it in this construction. Use it yourself in other projects. Wonders shall never end. Honestly, why would you go after such amounts for someone you can see that you're not in the same level honestly i was so interested to know how much it was because uh i was so interested like why would you take something that someone donated of course you can take the you can refuse to pay the the salaries as you said but now the the money that people contributed to this person you refuse to give them that is so low honestly <laughs> Marwa sometimes can go as low <laughs> as low as the gravity can allow, honestly why? but of course that is not a surprise, honestly because he did the same to African tea if you don't know African tea, she's an African village cook, I think that is the name which is so famous, some people contributed, there was a time that she didn't have a phone people contributed so that she can use the money to buy a new phone Marwa didn't give the donation to her can you imagine? When uh, African tea decided to request Marwa for that money, this is the manipulation tactic that uh, Marwa used. Quote unquote. This shows that you are using me because why would you ask me for such amounts? Why would you ask me for such money? It shows that you are using me. Just because someone requested for the money that belongs to them. Weak ass man, because why would you say that? That just shows you. The kind of person these people are dealing with. The same thing I mentioned yesterday. Not even me, the same thing Ivan mentioned. This person has a very dark part of him. Because a nice person, not even a nice person, a regular person. <laughs> you cannot go that low. If someone gives you money and tells you, give this person, because that person is not as rich as you are. That person is struggling. Give it to this person for him to do this for himself. For his family, for himself. Or for herself in the case of uh, African village cook, but you refuse to give it to these people? How can you describe that, if not wickedness, greediness, and uh, dishonesty? And yet the audacity yesterday to come out here and tell people that uh, that's for transparency, I'll not share the receipt because it's in uh, yesterday's video. If you watched yesterday's video, of course, you saw it. This is what he came out here to say. Oh, just for transparency, guys, I'm cultivating the late Jamaican grandma's, the late Jamaican grandma's home, the late Jamaican grandma's land. Transparency? <laughs> Transparency? Being transparent is paying the Jamaican grandma's family. 15,000 Kenyan shillings, which is around uh, 11, 12 USD. No, <laughs> which is around 100 to, around 100 dollars a year for you to cultivate that land otherwise that is hot here that is nothing you're coming out here to tell us that is not being transparent being transparent is doing the right thing being honest and of course i don't take anything that he says for what is i don't i don't trust what he says because until you pay african tea what you owe this lady until you pay mogesi until you pay alex you don't have anything <laughs> You cannot tell me anything, honestly. At least for me, you cannot tell people anything. Because you cannot claim to be an honest person while you're still not being honest to another person. If you have to come for justice, you must come with clean hands.
<laughs> you must come with clean hands. So, guys, that was it. A very short video, but thank you so much for watching. Of course, if this is your first time watching, kindly subscribe, like the video, turn the notification bell on, of course, so that you can be notified every time I upload a video. And most importantly, share your thoughts in the comment section. Let me know what you think. And of course, we'll interact as we always do. For my people, my people, my people, my, my people, thank you so much. Thank, thank you so much for the support. I can never thank you enough, honestly. I can never get tired of appreciating you because without you, this is nothing. Because who will watch, who will like the video, who will share the thoughts, who will leave a comment, who will inform me, who will correct me. So, thank you so much for the support that you show me. I really appreciate. I don't take you for granted and I love you so, so, so much. So, that was it for now. Until the next one, peace. Bye.